Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is using a tail stock. So in the turning or mill turn module, you can assign fixtures to your turning part for your turning tool paths and such. And as you can see on my screen, I currently have solids that represent my, my main spindle, my jaws, and something that represents the tip of my tail stock. So normally, when you set up a stock, uh, a, uh, a fixture in your setup, you can either go define fixture or you can go right into the setup and then access the fixtures from here. This is how I usually do it. That way I get the machine set up in place and then I tell it which specific fixture I like to use. In this case, uh, I'll just redefine one here. So I'm just going to go to the three dots and that'll bring me to my fixture definition screen. You can already see there's that kind of standard cross section of the jaws that are pop up. And we've covered this in a previous video where you can go through all this and a give the dimensions of each one of these standard stock, uh, standard uh, fixtures. But what I'd like to do in this video is show you how to use the other one, the fixture 3D model. The user defined, just to cover it here, is essentially the same sort of thing, it's just you're just gonna choose a SOLIDWORKS sketch and then get that to represent your, your standard cross section. But here I'd like to go full on 3D model and you'll see this window is similar to when you define your stock and your target. You're basically just choosing a solid that represents the fixture. In this case, it's the main spindle and the, the tail stock. Now, I've already done various combinations of this, so I'd like to go through those and show you how that works. So, in my setup, you can see I have main jaws and tail stock, just the tail stock, and something I'm called one solid. I'll show you why I've done this, each one of these, to show you the reason behind each one. So, let's say, for instance, I've done both solids the main jaws and the subspindle. Well, if I leave that as my fixture setup, let's just simulate one of my turning tool paths. I'm gonna to go to Solid Verify and it pops up and we can do things like see that I'm going to collide with the tail stock. Now, if I go to turning, however, it only shows the main stock. So that is because in that fixture definition, it only really wants one solid. It only really understands the first one that I, I clicked on. So in this case, because I chose both solids, it only really wants to represent the, the main jaws in the turning simulation. So as we saw in the solid verify, it sees both because again, that's kind of a carryover from the milling side where you would see all the solids that you select. But on the turning side, it's only using that one there. So what I did to overcome that is if I go back to the machine setup, this time I'll just choose just tail stock. And we'll do the same thing. Go to turning, and you can see that the tail stock pops up. The main does not. So because that was the only solid that I selected, it now is represented in the turning stock. So what you could do with this is you could set up multiple machine setups if you like. So the one tool path that is affected by the tail stock could be under that machine setup that just uses the tail stock. You can do that. You can flip back and forth so that in your simulations, it shows one uh, fixture or the other. Um, so that could be something you do if you don't want to go through the trouble of doing what I did next. Not that it's a big trouble, but it is, again, like we see in, Sol in SolidCAM, sometimes SolidWorks can help us out. So what I actually did was I created something called one solid. And if I take a look at that, it is both the main and the tail stock. But how did I actually do that? Well, let's go to the feature manager in the top left corner. I'm going to hide my main jaws and my tail stock. And I'm going to bring up what I called one solid. And I'm also going to hide the design model. I basically made a, uh, a cross section of the main jaws, cross section of the tail stock, and I connected them with this very small solid here. So this was all one cross section that I revolved to get this shape. So it's just kind of a way to generate one solid so that the machine setup understands the one solid. But also, I in, in the sketching of this, I created it with certain dimensions and whatnot so that it actually does have the same spacing and the same location as if they were two independent solids. So it's only one extra little bit of work. Rather than making two separate solids, one that represents the main jaws and one that represents the tail stock, I made one solid with the dimensions that represent those two items. Let me just show the design model. We'll go back to solid cam and let's one final simulation in turning. 
and you can see that the tail stock and the main jaws show up. And in terms of the sensor, well, I made it very small. It's not going to interrupt. I'm not going to see any kind of collisions with the center unless I'm doing, let's say, a part off or something like that. So in this case, I now have the main jaws and the tail stock, and I can do my collision detection against them. I can use them for um, any other purpose that I would need in, in, uh, inside the simulation. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Send us your questions or your parts review in our ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.